Alrighty, <clears throat> time for another tutorial. This time it's for the basics of the game because I've noticed a lot of new people are joining and some of the things are just usually only mentioned like as a side kind of thing even though they're the most important things about the game. So yeah, that's why I'm here covering it. It will be a bit freestyle so I hope I can keep things organized. So, um, what are the most important things about this game? First of all, it's the movement. Um, I put my controller on the left so you can see how exactly I move and try to rep replicate it the best at your ability. Just keep in mind that I'm using modern remapped, meaning if you use modern or classic or classic remapped, the buttons might be a bit different. For example, my jump is triangle. It could be uh, X for you or whatever. Um, same thing about some other things like rolling. For me, it's a circle button. On modern remap, it would be triangle and a run, which doesn't work here. But yeah, let's get right into it. So, movement. Obviously, you can move, move wander the normal way by running forward. This is actually the slowest way of moving unless you're literally crawling or whatever. Like, it's usually not that important, but it's important to know about those movement options because there are a few like different strategies that get infinitely more easier if you actually move quickly because you have a little bit more time to execute the strategies or whatever. And it actually makes a difference over a full game run, especially in any percent. So the simplest way to do fast movement, um, let's ex let me explain it first in theory. So basically jumping, just jumping, would be the fastest option. But the problem is, as you see, after each jump wander kind of stumbles a little. And that makes this form of movement even slower than the usual running. But there's a way around it, and that's whistling or weapon switching. Whistle is the X button for me, could be triangle for you, or calling aggro in general. And if you press the whistle button, it actually resets a wander speed to full speed. Meaning, as you see, I'm jumping here, and wander doesn't really stumble. Even if I did like high hops, which is a bit slower because there's a more of an angle to it. See, he resets the thing, meaning basically short hops with like the whistle in between, if you do it the easiest way, I usually just spam the buttons because that guarantees the fastest kind of way of doing that. Uh, that's a fast option and basically one of the things you need for fast movement, but there's a problem, obviously when you whistle, you get the attention of Colossi, you don't always want that. For example, it can disturb Zenobia's lineup quite a bit. Meaning, the alternative would be just weapon switching. It's the up button, you can also use like the left and right button depending on your like control options. On modern it's easiest to use the up button. So you just jump and weapon switch. It's the same idea, might be a little more difficult because it's well, a bit less easy to access, but it's the same idea. Like on Classic, you could do the same thing with the up button, or you can switch to right or to left or whatever. And as you see, jump, reset. Jump, reset. Same idea. Those are basically as fast as it gets almost. There's a few faster options. One of them only works on modern controls and one of them only properly works on 60 FPS, meaning a PS Pro. Uh, one of the things that I use a lot, because it's the easiest and fastest movement option almost on modern control, keep in mind, doing the weapon switches is already way faster than the normal running. I did the little thing with the bridge, where I run across the bridge while using the movement options and compared to normal running you would gain like 20 seconds using the jump weapon switch or jump whistle. Meanwhile, the next thing I'm gonna show you, the double roll, saves another 5 seconds of, on top of it, but it's way less drastic. 
So if you just want to stick to weapon switches or whatever, because it's the easiest for you, or because you're using classic controls, that's totally fine. But one other thing that can be very useful is double rolling, if you use modern or modern remapped. There the idea is you roll, you press R2 or R1, whatever the search for Colossus or aim button is. That basically resets Wander's uh, roll in a way, and then you can roll another time. Important is, you have to equip hand at first for that one, because only that way you can do the switch to this thing, and then roll another time. So, in slow motion, again, you roll, weapon switch, roll again. The weapon switch in this idea is the aim button. Okay, now I'll do it a bit more quickly. And you can continue doing this by weapon switching to hand. Because if you don't weapon switch to hand, it doesn't quite work as you see. Because you can't reset the animation of that. So, if you want to do this quickly, roll, weapon, roll, switch, roll, roll, switch. And always the aim button in between. I think it gets clear enough with the controller input. I think on modern it would be roll R1 roll or something. I use modern remote. And then the probably fastest way of moving if you can execute it properly is the bunny hop or like we call it Marcello hop sometimes because it was invented by, Mar by Marcello or Madurashi. Um, here you jump forward and reset your stick. See, I already messed it up a little. If you look at the stick on the controller input, you see it flicking back and forth. That's because after each jump, you flick the stick back into the normal position. You basically let go of it. And then you continue doing that. And the problem is, it's actually faster on 60 FPS because Wander kind of can react to that stuff easier. So if you see Marcelo doing it, it's like double the speed I'm doing it, because I don't have a PS Pro. Uh, and you can do it much, much quicker. But this is the most skill-intensive movement, and it's probably slower on 30 FPS, so it's not really worth doing unless you have 60 FPS. But you can try and learn it. I'm not even sure if it's a lot faster than double rolling, but I mean, Marcelo can definitely make it work, so maybe if you want to go all out of the movement, you can make it work. So here it's jump while holding forward, then letting go of the left stick and doing this thing again. Uh, the important thing about that is now I lost my train of thought. Basically, this takes the most skill and isn't worth it on 30 FPS. Yeah, let's leave it at that. Okay, now the next part will be about stabbing and plans. So I'll stop the video short for a short amount of time right here so I can get on a Colossus. Okay, um, this part of the video will be a little bit more difficult. I chose Valus. I might actually change my decision because this one is very easy to get to plant with. So, first of all, what is a plant? A plant is if you grab on a Colossus and Imbo the Colossus shakes. Wander doesn't care about it. Because usually, let me see if I can not gain a plant. Yeah, see? The Colossus shakes and Wander shakes too, he can't get a stab in. Let me try to get a stab in. I'm trying to stab. Oh, I'm getting shook. That's very bad for speedrunning. Unless you get into more advanced stuff, but usually, if you don't know what you're doing, you wanna stab rather than get shaken. So, and for that, we have so-called plants on most of the Colossi. The plant basically guarantees you that Wander doesn't shake. For that, each different sigil, or at least most of them, not all of them, but most of them have little spots where Wander doesn't care about the shakes if you do it right. For Valus, it's basically most of his head unless you go very far forward like I did earlier. Like even here, you can see there is a plant going on here. Why can you see it? Because Wander is not shaking. 
there's a few important things to note about plants. Um, you gotta grab the Colossus and then not move. Like, here, I grabbed, and now Wonder basically has the plant unless... I mean, he shakes here because uh, Valus does a very, very big shake. But for the most part, unless he does that, like Malus has one of the craziest shakes, it still works. Like here, for example, this shake animation, one that just doesn't care. I could be stabbing here. I have the stab lineup, and he can shake all he wants. This stab will go through. Like that. There's only one thing where it doesn't work is if you are planted, and then move forward during the plant. On Valus it's a bit tricky because the plant is very easy to get, but in theory... Okay, I'm not losing the plant here. Uh, I think here I should be losing it. Yeah, there you go. Kinda. Uh, on other Colossi it's even more extreme than on Valus. Valus is just very very forgiving when it comes to plants. But basically, once you get into a plant position, like that, and you start grabbing, you don't you don't want to move anymore. Because once you move while you're planted, usually that loses the plant. There's a few Colossi where this is actually beneficial, like on Avion where you don't really want to get the plant. But usually, like, if you move around like that, you lose the plant and you don't want that. So, important thing, grab, on, stab. Okay, here I actually didn't get the plant, so what do I do? I re-grab. And try a better position. Now here I'm planted, and yeah, I can't move around, I'm just stabbing, not moving around. Okay, I hope this was helpful, most of the colors I have different plants and I think Plush covers that pretty well, so I won't go in detail on that. Yeah, you see, he even shook just there, and it's still planted, I could be like, ah, okay, the first time it did. One last thing about stabbing, yeah, actually the more important thing even. If you switch to hand before the stab, it's actually faster to stab. See, it charges faster. Let me try to get a comparison. Stop moving, Dallas. Okay, he still moves. So, try to look at the bottom left. Um, wait, oops. So, here I'm stabbing. Stop shaking. Here I'm stabbing without the hand equipped. It charges. Now I switch to hand. Now I switch to hand. And then start stabbing. Maybe you could have noticed that it starts stabbing quicker. And the other thing is also I see a lot of newer fo folks do like a thing where they click the stab button once you notice the charge is very slow and that's a problem because this over the course of a run loses a lot of time and a lot of the timings are way more difficult maybe if you kept attention to the controller you saw let me wait out the shaking I hold the stab and this is much faster meaning if you wanna stab properly you wanna switch to hand before the first stab so it charges faster get into the plant and then Hold the stab and finish off. Okay. Um, I'm gonna reset this real quick because I forgot to talk about jump stabs that's coming up. Okay, here I am on Valus again. There's one last thing I wanna talk about when it comes to usual kind of stabbing and that's the jump stab. On Modern or Modern Remap you can do it by jumping and holding the square in the air. And on classic or classic remap, you jump and hold uh, the square button and the grab button at the same time during the air. I think you could see it on the controller plugin. You can actually also do the classic jump step animation on modern, like I just did earlier, like that. It's beneficial to some colossi, but that would be too much to go in depth. So, what is the important thing about jump step? Well, you obviously stab the Colossus instantly, let me do it. But, as you see, it takes Wonder a long time to get the stab out. So in most cases it's actually slower to just use jump stabs. 
there are obviously a lot of exceptions like when you can cancel the jump step or when usually the steps would be slow anyway and you can do very quick jump steps so let me do another jump step this time the modern one but when it always is faster if you think about it is the last step before you finish off the colossus why it's faster to do the jump step initially and the pullout animation doesn't really matter if you're finishing off the Colossus because the cutscene instantly triggers. It actually also triggers faster. Because when you do a normal stab like that, you always see like a little slow down animation once you finish off the Colossus. Meanwhile, here on Valus, for example, if you finish off the IEL with a jump step, no animation whatsoever, you're instantly in the cutscene. Meaning, it's always faster to jump step on the last step, if you can. And if it's safe enough, obviously, but many of the Colossi will actually be finished off with jump steps, the ones we do. And, unless there's an exception, you don't want to jump step the Colossus for any other kind of step. There is a lot of exceptions, just ask around in the Discord if you see uh, players do jump steps and you're not quite sure why it's faster. There's always an explanation for that. But that'll be it about jump steps. Now I'm gonna talk about um, reset steps or so-called cycle steps. Uh, and I'll switch for that to HD Kuro real quick. So, um, one thing before I load into the Colossus. Very specifically HT Kuro, but also on NT Kuro and on Quad's back sigil. There's a few more examples, but those are the easiest like uh, sigils to cycle step or reset step on. And specifically for HT Kuro, you can do a lot of them in a row, so it's a very good thing to practice those on HT Kuro. And if you want to get the one cycle on HT Kuro, it's actually the best if you go for the cycle steps, so it's really worth learning them. Without them it's still possible, but it's a lot trickier, unnecessarily trickier, in fact. So let's just load into the Colossus and I'll show you what I mean. Actually, I think I should have set up the Gotham Paint tutorial. Yeah, whatever, I'll do it without paint. I can do this without any paint. So, as always for Kuro, you want to whistle switch to switch to the bow when here I'll wait for him to get to the very top because the higher up he is the more he will fall and be stunned for um, so before I continue stabbing I, it's obviously time limited how long I can do the stabs before he turns over so I'll explain the idea first and then I'll show it in practice hopefully I won't fail it um, when you go up to the step, it's always on the left sigil, on his sigil that's closer to the head where you can do this. You want to stab, start stabbing on the right side, top right side of the sigil, and get very close to the edge of Kuro's sigil. And the idea is that you want to avoid a plant. Why, in this case, do you want to avoid a plant? Because when you're planted, you might have noticed, the stabbing animation is actually the one that takes the longest. Even though Wander is very safe, he doesn't shake, meaning he does a stab and pulls out and then only he can start stabbing again. Uh, and for most cases it's actually slower than doing the cycle steps, where you actually want to get shaken. But you want to get shaken right after the stab, a so-called ricochet stab. Meaning you want to stab on one, a position where you can't be sh really shaken out during the stab. Or maybe where you try and control it in a way where you don't get shaken out during the stab. But you want to get shaken out of the stab after the stab. And the idea now is that you reposition yourself, grab the exact same position where you got shaken out of the stab, and stab again. Each time where you reset your position, you can start stabbing quicker. You could just hold on to the same position and stab, but then you would see the whole animation of Wander kind of being shook around. So during after right after the stab, 
right as you're being shook you want to let go reposition yourself grab again and stab again so you're basically stabbing right when you usually would just stop shaking i'll show it in practice now and hopefully i won't fail because that would be horrible so it doesn't matter how you get to the situation you want to start to the right of it kind of like here here yeah this works stab let go reposition stab let go reposition stab you want to kind of go upwards towards the ledge where you kind of stop stabbing stab let go regrab you can see what i'm doing on the right side i'll keep doing it it kind of doesn't work and there's no sigil anymore yeah but i hope you get the idea if you are not quite sure what i'm doing let go uh not let go slow down the video and look at the controller what the controller is doing and what i'm doing in front on the screen but basically just to explain the rhythm again you grab on on a position where you will get shaken which is the top right of his sigil you start stabbing stab then you right after you get shook you let go move up a little Grab again and do the stabbing again. That's basically the idea of it. And right now I didn't fail it at all. So you can see it's actually very consistent if you get practice in it. It also works on quads back sigil. It's a little bit more difficult there. But it basically works more or less the same way. Just look at some like boss rushes or IELTS where people do that. And on many other colossi it's like... A thing that they do in IELTS or when you get the chance to do it. Like on Barber's Head you can do it pretty well, but it's very based upon where you start stabbing and what the animation of the Colossus is. It's a bit more difficult. Like basically watch any of Stormglads or the Varus IELTS or whatever. Marcelo also obviously. Any kind of good IEL runner does it wherever possible. Don't look at my runs, usually I mess it up. <laughs> but yeah, any kind hammer, obviously. Any good IL runner will do those whenever possible, and you can see how it kind of works out with the animations. You can maybe try to incorporate some of them, but that's the gist of it. Um, Now I'm thinking, what else can I show? One other thing that I can maybe show here as well, real quick, is on classic controls, one big advantage of classic controls is that you can roll out of stabs. That works very well on phalanx, for example. Like, for example, you're stabbing here, and right after the stab, you roll. That's another cool thing you can do. Because usually, if you would stab, you would wait out all of that animation, then you can only start stabbing again. But if you roll, you can basically restart. Okay, he's turning around. That's another little thing. Now, is there anything else I want to talk about? I don't think so. If there's anything else you want me to talk about, let me know. Maybe I forgot something. I'll do a follow-up video. But that's the basic gist of it. I'm gonna put in timestamps for the important parts. I'm kind of sad about the fact that I only remembered to explain the actual stabbing right after I explained the plant. Because... The stabbing is honestly the most important thing that a lot of new people lose the most time on. Oh yeah, about stabbing as well. Um, I can actually show that real quick. Uh, without even showing a sigil. I see some newer people, they don't actually notice how the stamina thing works. And they don't do full stabs. For the most part, unless the sigil is like... Not the full amount of stabs worth you always want to do full stabs because that's the fastest and if you look at the bottom left the stamina bar slowly fills up and if you're like at the max you can see at the bottom left how it's at the max that's when you know you do a full stab it's not based on wonders animation how some people do think i think i saw some people stab like at this amount because they look at wonders lag or whatever but that's not actually a full stab if you notice, that's not a full, quite a full step. You want to always not wait for this one, but wait for the full step. 
There are obviously exceptions to that. Like on Phalanx or Pelagio or on um, Dirge. There are a few like sigils where you want to do precision steps, but for that just watch the tutorial of the Colossus. There's always like exceptions to the rules. But yeah, that's about it. I'll leave it at that. Hopefully it wasn't too long. Hopefully I explained everything well enough. And uh, yeah, good luck with your runs, guys.